This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. What is the meaning of human life? That question may make you uncomfortable. It is one about which some people would prefer not to think. And yet, even the person who says philosophy is a waste of time has just made a statement of philosophy. It is, in fact, impossible to live on Earth as a thinking, feeling, and perceiving human being without formulating some sort of working philosophy of life. The question, then, is whether it will be a good one or an inferior one, a true one or a false philosophy. To cite an instance, one contemporary influential philosophy is materialism. Several noted philosophers of historic record have held to it. Materialism is a word derived from the Latin materia, which means matter. It's a school of thought holding that all mental processes originate in the physical body, brain, and nervous system. Materialism denies the existence of the mind or soul as distinct, separate, and apart from matter. In fact, materialism is the philosophy that the only real thing in all the universe is matter, just atoms and molecules, electrons, protons, physical matter. You may have held that philosophy without having carefully thought it through, but you may believe that yourself. You may have come to that conclusion without any particular reason to substantiate it, yet that may be the philosophy upon which, unthinkingly, you have based your entire life. That material things are all that there is. But there's a problem with materialism, many problems actually, but one of them is that there's absolutely no proof whatever, that it is true. Not a scientist or philosopher on Earth can prove that matter is the only reality in the universe. Some scientists and philosophers have led people to assume that they somehow had proven that matter is the only reality in the universe, but in fact, they have not done so at all. This is the fascinating thing about it. If you study the biographies, the day-to-day -day lives of these very scientists and philosophers who have contended in their writings that they believe matter to be the only reality, you find that in practice they actually behave quite differently than I, at least, would expect that they would. They fall in love and form friendships and visit art museums and attend symphony concerts, write letters to their friends, and engage in all matter of other activities, which would seem to indicate that they make real choices, perceive real meanings, understand real values, and at times reverence goodness or seek truth or delight in beauty, all of which to me constitutes conduct unbecoming a materialist, really. Can you truly believe that your finest and highest hopes, dreams, loves, aspirations, insights, loftiest longings, are only the results of electrons skidding and colliding into one another like billiard balls on a green felt tabletop. Can you sincerely say you believe that all of the noblest and best sentiments which stir within you are nothing but molecular congestions, clots of consciousness which congeal and dissolve randomly in the convolutions of your brain? Of course not. I have said that it is impossible for the materialist to prove the contention that the only reality in all the universe is material. For one thing, that assumes a knowledge of all the reality in all the universe. Or how else could the materialist know that the only reality in the universe is material? The truth is he doesn't. So materialism cannot be proven. But then neither can the position which I take, theism. I freely grant the existence of matter in the universe, but deny both that it is the only reality in the universe and that it is the supreme reality of the universe. I am immutably convinced that the supreme realities are spiritual. Neurology and biochemistry simply do not know how to account for the consciousness of the human being, the self-reflective nature, the ability to create, to reverence, to foresee, to love. I contend with the utmost conviction that these are more than electrochemical convulsions of the human cerebral cortex, but that man is possessed of a soul, indeed man is a soul, and is possessed of a body. There are circuitries of spirit sparkling through your mortal mind. There is something of eternity which constitutes your inner self, for the kingdom of God is within you. And delicately superimposed upon your patterns of thought, 
there is a spiritual energy system capable of stimulating your mind and motivations with new purposes if you will choose to be at one with the will of the infinite God for a child of eternity you are a son or daughter of the first source and center of all that is God and by living faith you can discover you can realize and actualize this ennobling and energizing truth you can begin to live as you were born to live as you were created to live and in your soul as you have longed to live in faith and hope and love down through the centuries of human history religion has been one of the major influences upon the life of humankind but how has religion been understood Tyler the anthropologist called it simply the belief in spiritual beings the philosopher Alfred North Whitehead described religion as what the individual does with his own solitariness George Bernard Shaw called it that which binds men to one another and Havelock Ellis has written that the deep breath of relief which a person draws from time to time is religion but the interesting thing is that the persons whose definitions of religion would be the most interesting and illuminating the founders of the great world religions seemed to have been remarkably unconcerned about defining it Jesus simply went about teaching friendship with God and friendship with others the love of God and man and that he insisted is the basic fulfillment of great spiritual living God loves you infinitely you may respond that you were not aware of that it is nevertheless true you may be oblivious to that fact but nevertheless it is true I read one time that in Shasta County California there was a 14 year old boy lying drunk on a railroad track he'd lain down there to go to sleep stretched out on the railroad ties right between the rails and before long a half mile freight train came roaring down the track and ran over him the whole train from engine to caboose and the boy slept right through it the engineer reported he suddenly saw this boy lying there between the tracks sleeping but try as he might he couldn't get the train stopped until the entire half mile of it had passed over the boy the engineer and the other trainmen went running back to where he was lying there he lay without a scratch between the rails believe it or not still sound asleep when the trainman shook him and woke him up he said he had no conception that a train had just run over him yet is that one iota more astounding than the fact that millions of human beings on this planet live and move and breathe in the very living presence of the very living God of this universe yet seemingly without the slightest awareness of that reality the spirit of the infinite God is omnipresent everywhere the kingdom of God is within you a fragment of infinity of God's presence indwells your very mind to awaken to this tremendous truth is the beginning of a new era of resourceful living creative courageous living living as the son or daughter of God you were born to be you may not intellectually be capable of conceiving the infinity and eternity of God such concepts have always been bewildering to humankind the ancient Egyptians wrote the number one as a straight line the number 100 as a corkscrew a wavy line 10,000 as a pointing finger 100,000 as a jumping frog and the Egyptians wrote the number one million as the following symbol the face of a man with an expression of astounded amazement upon it there was both humor and wisdom in that numbers as large as a million are astonishing to contemplate so with the infinity and the eternity of God our mere mortal intellects are incapable of conceiving the boundlessness of being which is God but even though we cannot intellectually fathom the illimitable essence of God the truth remains that you can come to know the personality of God you can know God the fatherhood of God the wondrous living illimitable love of God these spiritual experiences are available simply for the questing real religion is loyalty to the real it is allegiance to supreme values wholehearted devotion to the God who is the source of all meanings and values in all this universe of universes and in coming to know this God 
There is joy, there is love, fearless faith, and a deeper sense of purpose than you have ever experienced in all your life. Furthermore, the spiritual life utterly alters your perspective upon the passing events of this world. I saw a cartoon one time that showed one man watching his television set while another man asked him why he'd gotten rid of his big television set and replaced it with such a little one. And he replied that it was because when he watched the news on his new little TV set, the problems of the world seemed smaller. Many popular philosophies, psychological movements, and religious teachings do essentially just that. Make problems look smaller. But they do nothing which in fact alters things, one molecule. But the teachings of Jesus are quite the opposite. They actually change things. And this they do by changing people. Whereupon people in turn change things. The vitalizing power of God aflow in a human life can tremendously transform first that individual and then in time the very world itself. The eternal adventure of living as a son or daughter of the eternal God can begin for you if you have not discovered it before this very moment here and now if you will make that supreme commitment to give your life to the God who gave you your life in the first place, whose son or daughter you are, and who loves you with a living love which will not let you go. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written things on finding God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, life after death. All of this, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U. R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>